Here today we have the Vonderhaar, Bergen, Collins, and Hadley Rude Goldberg project. Uh, I'm just going to go through basically the, the layout of the machine. Um, this here is, we have this helix. The first ball will be dropped here. The second ball will be held here. The ball will roll down, hit them both. The combined um, mass would fall down into this tunnel and there are some little wing tips in the tunnel that move as the balls pass. Then as they go through the tunnel, there is a lever at the bottom that when these balls, both of them hit, will knock this ball off down to the track. It will continue down the track, hit this ball in the corner, this ball will go down this side, <laughs> then it will start off a chain reaction of marbles going up this entire structure, hitting this ball, which hits this arm, Oh, that ball, which is this arm, which knocks this ball down this track, goes down the jump, usually hits the trampoline, will knock this black ball into this lever down at the bottom, which will knock this black ball up at the top down into this arm. This arm will hit this car that will roll down this track, hit a momentary switch, which will trigger the code that we have on, this, on the chip in the black box. That black box will trigger this torque motor that will turn one face of a Rubik's Cube and that's the intent of the project. Let's see how it works. It turned, it worked, we are saved! Okay, we have the Bergen Hadley Collins and Vonderhaar project here yet again, and we just want to go ahead and go and talk about the physics of everything that is going to be going on in our Rude Goldberg project. What we're going to have here first is we're going to have a ball that's just going to sit on this ramp here, just like that, and then it's just going to start rolling just by its potential energy. We're not going to even touch it at all. Then it'll run in, there'll be a second ball placed here. It'll have a collision there, and there'll be a transfer of momentum and energy using the kinetic energy of the ball that'll cause them both to come flying down. And now here it's just a straight drop as if we were to just to drop the ball right in there. And that'll just be using the potential energy of each ball, which will then hit these and it'll create a downward acceleration and the force will knock the spindles open and eventually land on the lever, causing this arm to move. Yet again, just by the force and momentum of the balls falling through the chute. And then the force exerted on the ball here by this arm would cause it to start moving down the ramp here. Okay, It'll then just travel by kinetic energy using that same acceleration and force until it reaches here and I'll have another collision here with this pink ball at the corner. And then here we'll just have another P equals MV collision here causing it to roll down and yet again triggering another mechanism using the force and acceleration of this to exert a force on each individual marble going through the chutes until it gets up to the top marble which will roll down hit this pink ball yet again just by the transfer of momentum and energy and this ball will roll down again and hit this little lever right here and then just we're going to transfer a force momentum from that ball up until here Don't worry about that, Mr. D. Um, and then we'll go ahead and have this lever here fall forward, touch this ball, and then the little bit of force from that will combine with the potential energy of this ball to have it start rolling down. It'll jump off the ramp here, come in, hit the rubber band trampoline. This is an elastic collision. 
Yes, and it will cause it to continue with its same velocity back in the other direction until it collides with these three balls, which will cause a chain reaction of collisions. And the momentum of the first ball will transfer all the way to the third until it hits this arm here, which travels all the way up here and touches this ball, which will cause it to move its block out of the way and then roll down just by its energy from the force of the collision and its potential energy on the slope. It will then hit this arm, which will transfer more energy over here into our mini zip line, which will then roll down until it hits the bottom. And then the force caused by the zip line landing on the bottom. It'll close the momentary switch. Yes. Which right here. <laughs> Which triggers our... Tr yes. It triggers the code that is on this box. It's programmed to read that in. Once it realizes that that has been closed, it sends out a signal to this motor here, which turns this arm, and the, mo the motion is transferred with the gears. That'll do. Motion transferred with gears. Then the second gear is attached to one face of the cube, which will then turn it. Click it again. which that is purely electricity and magnetism at work right there. We have our circuit, and once the circuit is closed here at the momentary switch, it causes the entire chip and the entire box to go ahead and function, and our motor will turn on, causing one quarter turn of the Rubik's Cube to occur, thus completing our Rubik's Cube and completing our Rude Goldberg project. Yet again, we have the Bergen, Hadley, Vonderhaar, and Collins project, take 43. Oh, yeah. Piss in my mouth. Shit. Okay. Don't do it. Bergen, Vonderhaar, Collins, and Hadley, take number, oh, dear God, this is better work, or I'm going to slap a hooker.